Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to have a look at another beer from a brewery that I always enjoy reviewing different things from. These guys were one of the first Swedish craft breweries that I encountered when I moved over here back in 2015. So for this review then, we are going to head north to a little place called Hedemura in Dalarna County, Dalarna Lane, and we're having a look at another beer from Opie Gord's Bravery. This one is the Cascadian Dark Ale, which is the latest release through the Tilferid Small Party Assortment in Seastem Balagat and it comes in at 5.5% ABV. So this beer was released on the 27th of March 2020 and you, the interesting thing about this is that you don't see too many beers marketed anymore as Cascadian Dark Ales. Now as far as I can figure the main difference between this and a black IPA it tends to be the ABV. So as we know, uh, pale ales, IPAs, double IPAs and barley wines, these are all related to each other through the malt to hop ratio, if you like. So as far as I can figure, a Cascadian dark ale, I think, is basically a black pale ale. So yeah, that's the really interesting thing about these. And as I've told you before, I'm a big fan of black IPAs, but I've always preferred the imperial ones mainly because you tend to get a little bit of a kind of caramelty sweetness out of them and I've always felt that that complements the black malts really well, but that said, I have had quite a few lower ABV black IPAs in recent times that have made me think again and this one will be very interesting, one, because it's only 5.5% and two, because it has the caramel in it, so hopefully this is a beer that makes me think a little bit and it's got a nice hop bill on it as well, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on, but it's always really Really nice to return to Opie Gourds. The last beer that I reviewed from these guys, the Sutton, which was barrel aged, was that an Imperial Porter? or Imperial Stout, I forget, but that was a really quite nice beer. My favourite beers from this brewery are probably the New Sweden IPA, the India Tribute, and of course you've got the um uh, you have the Amarillo and things in there as well. These guys are a very sort of old school brewery. If you want a nice kind of West Coast type IPA, the Turbo IPA and the Turbo Stout, those are very, very nice beers actually. Some of the kind of classic Swedish craft beers if you like, so check those ones out. And they're releasing more modern beers as well, the Utan Double IPA and the Norn Paleo. They've got some really nice kind of hazy stuff as well as the kind of uh, modern classic um, a new Sweden IPA, that's a very nice beer as well. But yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. I'm very curious to see how this beer turns out and it is good to see Opie Gores being a little bit more prolific and trying different things as well. So yeah, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Opie Gorge Brewery Group before. No doubt you will see some more at some point in the near future. There's all the usual social media down there too. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to whenever I get the opportunity. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit, about Opie Gord's Breguery then. So Opie Gord's Breguery was founded back in 2003 in Hedemura, which is to the northwest of Stockholm in Dalarna County, kind of close to Berlanga and Fallon. Fallon, of course, home to Sabaton, one of Sweden's greatest metal bands. Absolutely love those guys. But this brewery itself sits on the 250-year-old Falkstrom family farm in a small, the original one was in a small wooden building, which was apparently constructed back in 1896. And this space was originally the flax dressing uh, workshop, if you like, and also their great-grandfather's metal smithing uh, workshop as well, which is quite cool. Oh, wonder what's going on there. But all of the beers were originally produced in this old building, but they've now added another their malt house and they have a new brewery building these days as well. I would say that in Sweden at the moment these guys are one of the higher kind of volume um I guess you could say, yeah, higher per volume craft breweries in the country at the moment. But the brewery itself was founded back in 2003 by Bjorn Falkström to revive the family farm, and he also wanted to revive the old tradition of Swedish farmhouse ales. So these beers were the norm in Sweden until the kind of modern, generic, watery lagers took over in the 1800s, and this made the farmhouse beers largely unprofitable for the, the kind of rural communities, so they just stopped brewing them, basically. But this brewery became very popular over the years, and this has allowed the Falkström family 
employed to continue to make their living on the farm as they've done since the 1700s. In the first year they produced only 8,000 litres of beer and sold it locally but they now produce well over 1 million litres of beer and they've got a new, a new Italian brew kit and production capacity of 2.5 million litres of beer per year and as of March 2020 when I'm filming this review for you they've produced around 100 different types of beer so um, yeah pretty impressive brew this one like I say one of the larger by volume craft beer producers here in Sweden but they've definitely got some very very nice beers that I'd recommend that you, you try out I need to try a few more of their core range I've reviewed a good few of them over the years and I tend to review the new ones when they come out but as I say my favourites Amarillo is a really nice and uh, I forget if that's a pale ale or if that is actually an IPA but Amarillo is a very nice beer and um, they have the um, the turbo IPA is a really nice old school west coast double IPA the turbo stout is very good as well the new Sweden IPA is a bit of a modern classic India tribute is quite an interesting one and like I said the Utan and Norn pale ale were very good when they were released quite recently as well so yeah keep an eye an eye on what Opie Gourds are uh, releasing and uh, I'm sure you'll see more reviews here on the channel from them over the next little while. So um, yeah that's all you really need to know about Opie Gourds Brewery for the moment. If you want to learn more of course you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages to see all the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah let's see how we get on with this one then. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open it up. They have undergone a slight rebrand in recent times. You will notice that the bottle caps are a bit different than things. They've changed the sort of font and stuff that they have on them. Um, this beer, I think, will be really interesting. As I say, a 5.5% Cascadian Dark Ale. The malt base in this one is Pilsner malt, caramel and roasted malt. And then um, it's hot with Amarillo, Cascade, Chinook and Centennial. And it says here, if I'm translating correctly, it says the Cascadian Dark Ale is a dark and... Uh, and hopped like an India Pale Ale. Uh, this beer um, has a domin has uh, a nice kind of fruitiness to it and sweetness, but it also is dominated by the kind of roasted malts. It's balanced between uh, it has it's a balanced and nice aroma with uh, a floral and citrus fruit with from the dry hopping. So um, yeah, that's interesting. So Opigards is a little uh, independent brewery. Um, based in the forest uh, just outside of Hedemore on Dalarna and we began brewing beer in 2003 and we continue doing everything um, with just hops and malt so yeah I hope I've pronounced that correct there's one or two of the words in there that I'm not 100% sure of but I think I've basically uh, translated that fairly well so there you go there's the Swedish on the side there, but the hops in this one are Amarillo, one of my favourites, uh, the big oily orange hop, Cascade, which is the classic um, sort of uh, the classic kind of West Coast IPA, a bit of Chinook and a little bit of Centennial in there as well. So Chinook is known for its big dark grapefruit and uh, kind of floral, um, not floral, I guess it's more piney resin than Chinook. And then we've got Centennial, which is known for its kind of lemony zestiness. So I think this beer will be really quite interesting, but you can see the classic sort of um, Opie Gourds label on this one. I really like how this goes together. So um, yeah, without further ado then, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting. I'm really curious to see how this beer turns out. So let's get it out and into the glass. I re as I say, I really don't know why they released this one in a half litre bottle. Um, I can't think. They usually release their winter warmer beer in a half litre bottle, but I'm not sure why they would have done this one. I know they have like a Schwarz beer and I think they have a Dunkel and a Hellas as well come to think of it. I think they release those in half litres but I don't know if it's just because it's below a certain um, ABV or whatever. Um, so yeah because these guys have got a canning line now as well and that's what they're releasing the kind of hazy IPAs and stuff in. Um, so yeah it's kind of interesting that they went for a, a half litre bottle with this one but this beer wasn't expensive. I think this one was 35 or 40 Swedish kroners so really not very much. So um, yeah, as you can see with this one, it's poured a lovely dark kind of um, ebony rosewood colour. If I put the light through this one, it really is very dark. I mean, for 5.5% ABV, this is a surprisingly dark beer. It does have a little bit of a kind of Coca-Cola coloured edge to it in terms of the, um, you know, in terms of the the, the, the colour and things and you can see the head on this one is about two-thirds of a finger and I would say it's a frothy kind of beigey 
lightly tan coloured head. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the uh, the bottom of the head there. So um, yeah, looks pretty nice I have to say. It's kind of what you would expect from a black IPA, Cascadian Dark, whatever you want to call it. So um, yeah, let's see how we get on with the aroma of this one then. Nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance. Oh yeah, that's pretty nice I have to say. Um, so for me, the um, this one's really well balanced actually. To be honest, with the aroma, it actually comes across as a little bit like a Schwarz beer. And that, you know, that is the kind of main difference. You've got the, the Czech Tmavi and the, the German Schwarz beer, which are the more lager type ones. And of course, you do have that rule in there. The lagers are fermented at very low temperatures, whereas the the, the ales are fermented at higher temperatures. But, um, pardon me, um, the other style I guess you could compare this to in a way is the Porter. And if I was blind smelling this, I would probably think that it was um, some sort of uh, porter or a, a Schwarzbeer or Tamavi or something like that. So that's an interesting point to make about this one. If I was blind smelling this, I really think I would say that it was either a porter or a Czech beer Tamavi. Um, uh, sorry, a, a Schwarzbeer Tamavi sort of thing. Because, yeah, the, the hoppy notes you get out of this... Um, you can pick up the juiciness of the fruit and the oranges from the Amarillo come out really nicely. We'll focus on that later. But I think the aroma of this one is quite well sort of balanced, if you like. I really like how the aroma in this one goes together. But let's try and break that down a little bit then. So for me, you can smell a little bit of that sort of roasty black malt in there. Um, I'm surprised. I would have probably guessed. It just tells you on the side here it's Pilsner malt, caramel and roasted malt that's in here, which I think roasted malt is... If you translate Rustad into uh, English, it's probably black malt. Um, so I would have thought that there might have been a little bit of um, of carafa in this one, to be honest with you, going from the aroma. But you get this lovely kind of brown bready base to the beer. It's got a little bit of that really kind of toasty, um, bread crusty quality to it as well, which is nice. Um, it doesn't come across, I mean, the roastiness in this beer is actually quite smooth and bread crusty. That's what would really make me think that there was carafa in this. Um, but there is a good little bit. The caramel is quite prominent in this, and it really gives you an impression of a sort of sweet caramel, but also a little bit of a, um, a kind of more biscuity quality to the beer as well. So I really like that aspect of the... Um, of the flavour, of the aroma rather in this one. The malt base in this I think is really nicely done. So big thumbs up to uh, to Opicores for this. That's a really attractive um, aroma there and if you've watched the channel before you will know that I'm a bit of a sucker for caramel and for orangey aromas too. So this beer is going to have two things that I am uh, really quite into. So just be aware of that. Maybe this review will get a little bit lovey-dovey. Who knows? But um, yeah, in terms of the hoppy side of the beer then so definitely a little bit of earthiness to this one. This beer, it really does have a few woody elements to it, come to think of it. And maybe, maybe there's even a wee touch of like a tobacco-y type thing to this too, which is kind of interesting. The more and more that I smell of it, the more sort of tobacco-y it gets. Um, yeah, there, there really is a tobacco-y element to this, which is interesting. So bear that in mind when you smell this beer. But on the hoppy side of things, like I say, a little bit of earthiness. There's some nice kind of floral notes to it as well. as a little bit of a lighter kind of um, grassy kind of quality as well. And uh, I really like the... Um, I really like the fruitiness that comes out of this too. It's got a lovely big oily kind of old school fruitiness to it. Like I said, the Amarillo... I think comes out of this really nicely and um, you've got a big oily orange character that comes out sort of at the back of the nose but at the front of the nose you really get the cascade out of this one and you know with it being called a Cascadian dark ale cascade should be the one that kind of takes the front seat if you like so I really like the that aspect about this beer how the aroma comes out so you've got those lovely um, juicy red fruity notes it's almost a little bit like black curranty blackberry sort of notes and um, maybe figs um, that you're getting out of the, the cascade in this one. As I've told you before, hops behave differently depending on what malt base you put them with. But you've got a lovely bit of that orangey note from the um, from the Amarillo in there. Amarillo is a big um, 
oily orange chop. I think, if I remember rightly, Amarillo is about 10%, 11% alpha acid. Cascade is only about 8%. Um, Centennial, I think, is about 11 or 12 And Chinook, I can't remember. Maybe it's about 12 as well. But Chinook will also contribute some of that red fruity character. It will give you the big piney resins. I don't get too much in the way of the, the kind of lemony zestiness from Centennial. Um, I don't really get too much of that in the aroma, to be honest with you. But I guess it will probably come out a little bit more in the flavour. But then again, if we think about how Simcoe behaves in dark beers, it can give you some really interesting notes. So maybe the Centennial... Um, comes out a little bit differently but the fruity notes in this one are there is a, a good bit of berryishness to this one like blackberries black currants that kind of thing you've got the oily orange you've got some of the kind of lighter red fruity notes in there as well there is almost a bit of a kind of dusty element to this beer too the more that you smell of it so take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it but I'm going to have a taste of this one now because I'm very very curious to see what it has in store this one is the Cascadian Dark Ale coming in at 5.5% um, from Opigord's Brewery in Hedemora in Dalarna County here in Sweden really curious to see what this has in store Slange, Skull Oh, that's quite different. That really is quite different. Um, I'm just trying to figure out if you, when you take this beer in, it has this really kind of pungent flavour right in the middle of your palate, and I'm trying to figure out is that the black malt or is it the hops? That's really interesting. Um, yeah, let's take another sip of this and see. Yeah, there's something really interesting going on in the middle of the palate here that's I don't think I've ever had from this style of beer. It's almost like a combination of sweet caramel and then some kind of grassiness um, on the top of the, the beer, which is, is really nice. Um, that's, that's, it really is interesting that I like this beer. I'll say straight away, I do like this one. Um, Maybe it is fair to describe this one as a, a black pale ale. I think I would stick with that description. So maybe that is accurate for the Cascadian darts to say they are sort of like black pale ales. But the fruitiness in this one too is really very, very nice. There's a lot of blends and interesting combinations of flavour going on in here. Um, so yeah, middle of the palate then. You can feel that nice kind of roasty, toasty black malt note. That blankets the middle of your tongue there. On top of that, you start to get the more kind of brown, bready quality in there. If you go to the back of the palate and go right to the centre, you can detect a little bit of that kind of crispness what the Pilsner malt is going to get you. But I like the way the breadiness and uh, and stuff goes together in this one. This is this beer is really quite nicely done. It gets a thumbs up from me. And um, this is a you know the Cascadian Dark isn't a style that I drink too often. But I do have a good uh, appreciation for these black IPAs. And I've noticed recently in Sweden there's a lot of breweries are having a go at um, black IPAs and Schwarz beers and things like that. So they do seem to like their, uh, their lower ABV dark beers here. So yeah, it's cool to see the Opigords are kind of joining in with that as well. Because the ones I've had have all been from the very small uh, craft breweries. Not that there's anything wrong with that of course. But it's interesting to see that one of the bigger breweries has a go at it as well. It's quite a random release this when you think about what's, what is popular these days. But yeah, um, the more and more that I drink of this one, in the centre of the palate I start to get more of the kind of uh, caramelly notes out of it. In the very centre of your tongue you get this nice oily caramelly note and then as you move out from the centre of the palate you've got a nice kind of biscuity quality there. But then towards the back of the palate I start to get more of the kind of roasted black malty notes. The beer really starts to dry up in the the back of the palate. So probably the Pilsner malt is kind of, there's maybe a bit of a kind of antagonistic kind of thing going on there between the Pilsner malt and the black malt. They both seem to kind of dry out the beer, um, the flavour of this beer or the palate I should say, they tend to dry out the palate a little bit at the um, 
at the back. So that's that's a really interesting point to uh, to make about this one. I like how that goes together. If you go to the front corners of the palette and move in, you will get a few sort of woody undertones out of this beer. And this one, this is just a really interesting kind of concoction, if you like. You know, and at five point five percent, it is a nice kind of drinkable session beer. This. Um, you know, it's it, they'd say it's limited release, but I do wonder if it's popular, if they will bring it back. That's one of the things that I hate about the craft beer world, is that you sometimes find some really good beers, but then they'll just disappear, never to be seen again. And I do like this one. I think this is this is really nice. Uh, I know that they have a Schwarz beer, and they've got a Dunkel and things like that as well. So on the basis of how this one's turned out, I'd be curious to have a go at some of those. Or am I... Oh no, I think it might be Dugas that have the um, the Schwarz beer. I think I know that these guys have a Dunkel. I think it's called Hayden Mora Dunkel, and I think they do have a Hellas as well. But I'm not sure about the Schwarz beer actually. But um, yeah, that'd be cool. The other one I want to try from these guys is the Turbo Barley Wine, but I've never seen that in the bottle. Come to think of it. But yeah, I do like this one. So on the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate you do have a wee bit of earthiness there and I think that's mainly going to come from the cascade and it's quite a sweet earthiness to be honest with you. As you come further forward along the sides of the palate there you can feel there is a wee bit of that kind of resin note from the from the Chinook um, but I think it is more kind of floral and aromatic to be honest with you rather than being big and piney resinous and Amarillo, um, Centennial and uh, Chinook are all going to give you a little bit of that. Cascade will contribute to it as well, but around the front curve of the tongue it is a little bit lighter and more uh, grassy in my mind. So yeah, I really like how that um, how that goes together. The hoppy side of the beer and the sort of more spicy floral notes you get out of it, they complement the Kind of roasty black backbone of the beer as well. Like I say, it's drier and darker at the back of the palate than it is towards the front. You start to get more of the kind of sweetness and smoothness towards the front of the palate as well. But then behind the front curve of the tongue, you've got that oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. And for me, this is where this one gets really quite interesting. So yeah. With this one, um, I think this one, just at the point that I'm drinking this, I think it's quite, um, I think this is quite fresh actually, because it, um, it just feels kind of crisp and things, which is, is really nice. But in the, the oily bubble behind the front curve of the palate, you really get towards the back of it, you do get those darker kind of grapefruity notes, which is good. Um, and that'll be from the Chinook and from the Cascade, but as you come further forward, you do get the, the more oily um, orangey notes from the Amarillo, and then just behind the very front tip of the tongue, you do get a little bit of that kind of zestiness from the Centennial. Um, that's, it's, it's really just interesting how all of these flavours kind of combine and go together. The Centennial, I thought the Centennial might have come out a little bit differently in the flavour. It's given me a wee bit of gas this beer actually um, and that's I always get that from the kind of more sessionable drinkable beers but um, you can really pick out a little bit of that kind of lemony zesty note behind the, the front kind of curve of the tongue which is, is really nice actually so I like how this beer goes together it really is um, it really it gets a thumbs up from me this one I wouldn't hesitate to drink this again and it's quite nice to think about the Cascadian dark ale and the uh, the regular black IPAs I mean in terms of the the flavor and the thickness and stuff of the flavor this one to me it just sort of strikes me as a um, as a sort of regular black IPA some of the black IPAs that I've had before have been very hoppy and bitter some of them have been really roasty and toasty but I think this one is a nice kind of sessionable take if you like so maybe I could be tempted to say that with the, the sort of black styles, if you like, that I like the Cascadian Darks and I also like the Imperials. I'm maybe not so keen on the uh, the in-between. I either like them to be big and thick or I like them to be quite nice and uh, smooth and drinkable like this, actually. I think the, the, the sort of description I gave earlier of this one being a black paleo, I think that's pretty accurate with this beer. But the, the juicy fruitiness that you get out of this beer 
is really nice. The further you go into the aftertaste, you do get a little bit of a kind of black currant blackberry um, type quality out of this one. And I think that will be mainly from the, the Cascade itself, which is fitting because it is called the Cascadian Dark Ale. So um, yeah, this is a nice beer. It's quite different from what you're going to find in other places at the moment. So have a go at it for yourself and see what you think. I mean, it's 35, 40 Swedish crowns for a half litre of a well-brewed beer. I think that's a good price to be honest with you. So well done to Opie Gores Brewery for this one. And it's nice to try a slightly different style from them as well. So yeah. But yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel with this one then, um, I'd say that this is a fairly kind of mid-bodied beer. The carbonation is quite crisp, I think. To me, there's something about this beer that is just quite crisp. Um, there's a bit of an oiliness to the um, flavour of this one too. I'm drinking this one. I think this is very, very fresh. Because in the middle of the palate, you almost feel a little bit of dustiness from the hops. And it's kind of the similar it's kind of similar to the dustiness you get from some of these double dry hopped New England IPAs. There is just a little element of that in this beer. And it did say, yeah, there's Torho it says Torhoomling in on this one. So that's dry hopping. So you do get a little bit of the dustiness um, out of this one. So maybe, maybe it might have been better to leave this beer for you know a week or two in the bottle and just let it kind of mellow out a little bit so maybe I am drinking this one very very fresh um, and if it's because it was released on the 27th so I'm drinking this one this is the 31st I'm drinking this four days after I picked it up so maybe I should have left it another kind of week or so on the shelf so maybe drink this one when it's about a week somewhere between a week and two weeks old and just let it mellow out a little bit more that could be an interesting thing but even when it's really really fresh like this I think it, um, it works out really nicely I've always I think I'm, I am starting to be of the opinion that when it comes to dry hopping the beers need to really mellow out uh, in the bottle or in the can for a week to two weeks so that you can fully appreciate the flavours but this one does have a little bit of that kind of dry dusty element from the dry hopping which is it's interesting for a black IPA at least I've not really heard of many um, dry hopped black IPAs in fairness but yeah I think it's fair to say with this beer like I say mid-bodied Smooth carbonation, but quite crisp at the same time. Got a little bit of an oily character, but also a little bit of dryness and dustiness to it. In terms of the hoppy bitterness, I think this one's got to be about 70, maybe 80 IBUs. It does have a good little bit of a bitter kick to it, which is nice. And that's both from the black malt and from the uh, the hoppy side of the beer. Some nice oily, um, some really nice kind of oily um fruity notes to the beer quite juicy i think further into the aftertaste as well and it has a very nice kind of um kind of smoothness and slightly sweetness to the malt base too so this one's just a really really interesting concoction i think uh, quite different from a number of other releases that you're going to find from swedish craft breweries and see stimbolaget so for the novelty at least it is really worth trying and uh, in terms of you know black ipas if you like this style i think you will quite appreciate this one but my tip for it would be just let it mellow out in the bottle make sure it's about two weeks old or so before you drink this one because i think uh, I've got a feeling this beer is good as it is, but I think it would mellow out to be even better with another week or so in the bottle. I was just very curious to try this one, to be honest. So, um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this then. This one is the Cascadian Dark Ale coming in at 5.5% ABV from Opie Gores Brewery in Hedemora, down the county here in Sweden. So thank you again for watching my reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Opie Gores bravery you will see these guys reviewed on the channel at some point in the near future because they are becoming more and more prolific and i always enjoy trying different beers for these guys i really hope they release the uh, turbo barley wine in bottle at some point that's one that i really want to try from these guys and i know that they've got the hedemora uh, dunkel so I want to try that at some point too. But thank you again for watching. Check out Opie Gorge Bravery. Have a go at the new Sweden IPA or the Turbo uh, Double IPA or the Turbo Stout. Those are probably the kind of classic beers from these guys. One of the older and more established Swedish craft breweries. Thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon. The Cascadian Dark Ale at 5.5% from Opie Gorge Bravery in Dalarna County here in Sweden. Cheers.